Hello and welcome to a special edition of FSM News. I'm Janae Stubbs. FSM News is a product of Free Spirit Media, which is a nonprofit organization that empowers youth voice. For this week's newscast, we partnered with Vocalo.org to create election stories. Whether you're rooting President Barack Obama gets four more years or Governor Mitt Romney takes over, here's a scoop on the latest political issues. Many young people don't believe that voting is important, but this can have a negative effect on their lives. If young people don't pay attention, when they get to voting age, they don't understand what they're voting for. Um, and I think then when you don't really understand what you're voting for, you choose not to vote. It's always uh, interesting to see uh, how politicians uh, just skip over the younger person uh, because they can't vote, uh, but most of the decisions that they make have a trickle down effect and reach the young people directly too. I think it's really important to start paying attention to those issues from the beginning, just because when you become a young adult, you need to be educated about what's going on in your country. I'm undecided because I agree with uh, some claims by both parties, uh, and I just want to see results happen. In order to help young people make a wise selection when voting, here are some factors to consider. You kind of have to balance your conscience a little bit with what you feel is right and wrong. Um, everyone comes from different backgrounds and you do have a different kind of um, perspective on that. And I think that's important. You need to go with your gut there about what you think is right and wrong. Think of the things that you care about that affect you, that affect your family, that affect the people in your immediate circle. After considering these facts, there's only one last thing to do. When you see kind of what side of the government you sit on, whether you receive a lot of help from the government, maybe you don't receive any help from the government, and you see how it can support you best, I think that's how you should make your decision. Although people have different beliefs, in the end it's up to you to make your voice count and vote. Reporting for FSM News, I'm Janae Stubbs. During the 2008 election season, there was an exhilarating mood in Chicago's atmosphere. History was about to be made. It's not like an average job, like Burger King or anything like that. It was like presidential election, so it was like huge in my eyes. So it was like, made it seem like anything was possible. Um, when they heard the news, they was very excited. They just like it was a big milestone for the whole country, and it just came a long way. But in this year's election, things are a little different. Voters don't seem as energetic as four years ago. I don't feel that vibe that they're excited. Uh, I think they're kind of indifferent. Um, a lot of folks are feeling pretty indifferent uh, right now. They don't feel that they can trust uh, any politician on any side of the equation. Certain people who are just like, have like strong political views, yeah, they're excited, but people who live like in like bad neighborhoods or just like downsized communities, they're not too excited because their lives didn't really like change to a certain extent. President Obama inspired people to vote for him through hope and his slogan, Change You Can Believe In. But voters say to get inspired this time, President Obama and Governor Romney must show their ability to solve America's major issues. As far as the country, I hope he can do as much as possible as he can. And I mean by that, just like everything for good, like create more jobs, create more like chances for people to make it out of bad situations. I think he can just continue to uh, be a voice for the people and to work for the people and listen to the people and um, hopefully that will uh, trickle down into the communities uh, itself and get us off to a better start uh, for the next four years. Reporting for FSM News, this is Janice Newsom. High school students like Liana Marnay have big goals after graduation. I plan on attending Loyola University in Chicago. Um, I usually want to go to Boston College or Stanford. But these ambitious dreams come with an expensive price tag. Loyola and Stanford University's undergraduate tuition costs more than $50,000. How would these young ladies pay for this? Like how much scholarship money I get and financial aid and all that good stuff. But if I apply for the FAFSA and the school gives me enough money, I think it will be okay. When looking to the government for financial support, students like these scholars hope that the candidate that is chosen have their best interest in mind. To like, get anywhere in life, you need to go to college, and if I don't have proper funding, then I probably won't be as successful if I would if I had as much money. Director of Academic Enhancement Alex Blackstock pays close attention to the current candidate's stance on the college funding. At the Gary Comer Youth Center, he helps prepare the youth for higher education. 
Obama has done a, a lot that is friendly for college students. He's uh, wanting to make sure that the uh, interest rates on federal loans are capped at a certain percentage, which I think is very, very important because as I'm sure you're aware, earlier this year they had proposed a uh, an increase that was almost double the current percentage rate that students are paying, and that would make access to college very difficult for students who have to take out loans. We asked Blackstock, how will Romney as president affect college students? We don't know, because he hasn't been president before, so uh, we're not exactly sure what he's going to do. I know in his home state he had a lot of initiatives that were helpful for students, uh, but I also know that he's proposing a tax plan that would raise taxes for the middle class, which are make up the majority of college students. Whether students are for Obama or Romney, many adults believe that 18-year-old students should get out and vote. The next president affects their lives in more than just the college funding. Our younger generation all too often does not turn out, and just voting so that they have that voice is probably the most important thing that they can do. Reporting for FSM News, I am Patricia LaCase. When Barack Obama became president in 2008, it had a major impact on race in America. It actually feels great because uh, talking to my parents, my grandparents, they've never seen anything or never got a chance to see that. So for me to be part of the generation that sees the first black president is something I take to heart. Well, it's just like when the you know first man walked on the moon, it's something that gets marked down in history. The historical significance of an African-American president is obviously pretty pretty impressive given the, the terrible track record of America with race relations. So if you know your Civil War history, you know the history of the Civil Rights era, it's not been a pretty history. So eventually the, getting to the point that we can have someone hold the highest governmental office in our country um, and be of African American heritage is pretty significant. With the first African American president seeking another turn, is race a factor in how people will vote? If you vote in just because someone is of a certain skin color, you're not really inputting your political views into that candidate. It's all about how can you do good for your country and evolve and make your country a better country. AP government teacher Joseph Buckley says race played a role in the last election, but in a much larger context. In the last election, a lot of people voted for either the first time or voted for the first time in a really long time because they were really excited that there was an African-American running for president and had a very, very good chance of winning. So historically, um, minorities don't turn out as much as um, whites for elections. Statistically, that's the way it is. And in the last election in 2008, there was a lot more minorities that voted because they were excited by the candidacy of Barack Obama. But as for the 2012 election? The historical significance is kind of taken out of it. Um, and so there's a lot of people that are much more just looking at what does Mitt Romney represent, what does Barack Obama represent, and making a choice there. In order to choose the best candidate, Buckley teaches his students to analyze factors that had nothing to do with the way they look. It's important to know all their opinions. And it's especially important for someone that's the President of the United States because of so many hats that the President wears. The President isn't just in charge of the military. He also has the powers with Congress. He has power over courts. He's the one that is the official enforcer of laws. So you need to think about who is this president completely, not just on one single issue? Health care is a, also a big thing for me. I've always cared about health care. I think everybody should have an equal right to health care. With that being said, voters should pick Obama or Mitt Romney based on who favors their views best. They should just go with their gut. What do they value and what values line up best with whatever candidate is on the platform? Reporting for FSM News, I'm Tyrone Burnett. Well, it's time to wrap up this week's newscast. But we'll be back next time with election results and more coverage. Until then, check us out on Facebook. Search FSM News. You can also find us on ABC7 Chicago's website in the community section. Have a great weekend and don't forget to vote. Three, two, one, that's a wrap.